Welcome to the Great Basin Seasonal Outlook for June through September. Currently, Great Basin fire activity continues to pick up slowly from south to north across the Great Basin. The yellow and red dots show where we have our wildfires, and even some of these fires have grown to over 150 or 200 acres in the south. We still do have some prescribed burning occurring in northern Utah and up into Wyoming and even parts of the higher terrain of western Nevada, but that will certainly be on the downward trend as we continue to move into fire season. Over the last 7 to 14 days, we've seen precipitation mainly affect northern and eastern areas of the Great Basin. However, over the last two weeks, even this precipitation has largely been below normal. There have been some pockets of the higher terrain of northern Utah or Idaho that have seen near normal precipitation. Over the last 30 days, we've seen cooler temperatures, especially across the northern two-thirds of the Great Basin, as systems continue to track across the north. However, precipitation, even over the last 30 days, again, has been well below normal in most areas. Since October 1st, we have seen near normal or just above normal precipitation over parts of northern Nevada, southern Idaho, and northern Utah into Wyoming, and generally below normal precipitation down south. However, if we look towards the beginning of January to the present, you can see we have seen mainly above normal precipitation even over southern areas and even more precipitation over the northern half of the Great Basin. Snowpack has been on the downward trend, but in late May, we were still above normal across Nevada and Utah. And again, it does continue to melt with the periods of warmer temperatures, despite the storms moving through. However, there is still snow in the highest elevations. Looking at where this precipitation matters, during the monsoon season, July and August, precipitation on the left shows that it is most important to perpetuate fine fuel growth the following year in the areas in blue so the southwest, but even parts of southern and eastern Utah. However, most of the Great Basin really does not see fine fuel growth from monsoon precipitation. But looking at the monsoon last year, most of the above normal precipitation was across Nevada and Idaho and into western parts of Utah. So again, we really didn't see significant precipitation in much of eastern Utah, which is really what perpetuates that fine fuel growth. But we did see some of that precipitation over parts of southwest Utah into western areas of the Arizona Strip. Now looking at where winter and spring rains matter to perpetuate fine fuel growth going into the fire season, and it's those areas in the left in orange. So again, most of the Great Basin. And again, you can see where we saw our winter and spring precipitation was in many of these areas across northern Nevada, northern Utah, up into Idaho, and even into parts of southern and eastern Nevada, and western Nevada and the Sierra Front. So many areas that see fine fuel growth from winter and spring precipitation did receive that precipitation this last season. So what about two years ago? We have had two wet winters in a row, and last winter going into the 2023 fire season, was very wet with well above normal snowpack and in some areas was historic for the period. We did not see those conditions this year, but we did see above normal snowpack across much of Nevada, Utah, into southeast Idaho and parts of Wyoming. So we are coming off of two years of increased precipitation during the winter and spring. And you can see this when we look at the actual precipitation in liquid form, you can see the two well above normal seasons last year and this year in many areas of the Great Basin. So that means we are coming off of two years of fine fuel growth across the region. And last fire season was very quiet across the Great Basin, so we do have a lot of carryover in some areas that did not see some of that lower elevation snowfall. Our soil moistures have been on the downward trend with some drier weather moving into the Great Basin and warmer temperatures. So green up will be on the downward trend and we will see gradual curing continue across the Great Basin. Our drought conditions, we largely have no drought across the region with these two wet years. However, we do have abnormally dry conditions over parts of the Arizona Strip, far southern Utah and eastern Utah, and even into far southern Nevada. And these areas may see drought develop further going into the fire season. But really, the rest of the Great Basin, we are not expecting any drought to develop, with the exception of the far north in central Idaho, where we have had below normal snowpack much of the winter and spring, those areas could see drought start to develop later in the fire season. Looking at how the drought has changed over the last year, you can see we have seen definitely improvements across the Great Basin from our moderate to severe drought to now no drought. However, it's really two years ago where we were seeing more of those severe to extreme drought conditions across many areas of the Great Basin and even still some exceptional drought over parts of Nevada. So it did take two wet winters and springs and really two wet monsoon seasons to see that drought really improve. 
Looking at how our fire seasons translate to where we are in drought, the black boxes on this schematic show where our larger fire, season are, fire seasons are, where we burn well above average or well above median acreage. This is just for Nevada, but it's really representative of a lot of our lower elevation areas in the Great Basin. And you can see where we have these larger fire years are years that we're not really in drought or we're starting to transition back into drought. It's not in these areas that we are deep in drought that we see well above average or median acres burned across our lower elevations. And you can see where we are in drought this year. Again, really coming out of drought with two wet years, so we should have increased fine fuel loading and continuity and should be well above normal in many areas of the Great Basin. But we will focus on a few specific areas. So looking at our current fuel conditions, this is an experimental fine fuel spatial graph or spatial map showing where we are anticipating those fine fuel conditions to really be located. So the image on the left is an estimation of the total of carryover dead fine fuel from last year plus the new growth that we anticipate from 2024. And you can see the areas in green or blues are the areas of higher fuel loading and that is really over northern Nevada, southern Idaho and even into parts of northern Utah and even into the foothills of parts of the central Utah mountains and you are seeing some of those greens really above five or six hundred pounds per acre of fuel loading down in the far south. The image on the right is more for continuity. This shows the continuity of our invasive, invasive species, our cheatgrass, and you can see even in some areas where our fuel loading is not necessarily higher over northwest Nevada, you are seeing quite a bit of continuity of cheatgrass. So again, we will see higher continuity and higher fuel loading in some areas of northern Nevada, southern Idaho, and northern and western Utah, and in the far south. Looking at our fuel moistures, our 10-hour fuel moistures are starting to become more critical in the far south and drying further north. 100 hours showing that same trend, we are seeing our brush really start to dry out across much of Nevada and into, of course, Arizona and southern Utah areas further south, but still is remains fairly high over parts of central Idaho. And then our thousand hour fuel moisture is showing the same trend. So looking at going forward, what we expect to happen through the fire season, we have been in a state of El Nino, but we have transitioned out of that into neutral conditions. And we will continue to see those ocean waters cool off the equatorial Pacific, keeping us in neutral going into the fire season and possibly even a return to La Nina later in the fire season or towards the fall. What this usually means for us, we typically see our impacts from either El Nino or La Nina in the winter time. However, as we come out of El Nino going into the summer, we have continued to see areas of low pressure continue to move across the Great Basin, pre preventing stronger ridges of high pressure from developing. And that is typical coming out of El Nino. So we have had windier periods, also some cooler weather and some precipitation in the north, but we are seeing a transition out of that pattern and seeing stronger ridges of high pressure start to develop as we head into June. Here is the forecast going through June 6th and you can see total precipitation dry conditions across much of the Great Basin with the exception of the far north across central Idaho where these storms continue to track. And then the 8 to 14 day outlook taking us through June 18th so the middle of the month you can still see well above normal temperatures across much of the west again we are anticipating these stronger ridges of high pressure to dominate and really develop and last longer giving us well above normal temperatures and drier conditions and our precipitation should be either near or below normal with the exception of the eastern side of the great basin but again this is definitely we will see an acceleration of the curing of the fuels going through the first half of June with these hotter temperatures and drier conditions. So we should start to see that fire potential start increasing. Here's the forecast for the next four months. You can see the temperature in the top row generally showing warmer conditions again in June, but we could see some modifications in July and August as we see troughs of low pressure try to move into the west coast and you can see a sign of that with some cooler temperatures in the Pacific Northwest. So that could give us some windier periods going into July and August and also some opportunity for some drier lightning with much of the moisture being sort of pushed off to the east. And then those warmer temperatures returning later in the fire season. Looking at our precipitation, we are definitely seeing a drier trend going into July and August and possibly even September. So as those troughs try to move into the west coast, again, it pushes a lot of that moisture to the east, giving us more opportunity for wind and possibly on the fringes of that moisture, drier lightning. So with all of our grass, that really increases our fire potential going into this fire season. Here's a quick 
outlook for the monsoon months of July and August. So temperature here on the left, showing generally near normal temperatures for the Great Basin, which is obviously hot for July and August. And then precipitation again showing that drier signature. And this is just looking at past years that have a similar atmospheric pattern to what we're experiencing right now. So a lot of indications for a drier than normal, normal monsoon season, which is again what we've been seeing in some of the other models. So putting everything together, here is our fire potential outlook for the Great Basin. And again, this is really looking at the potential of increased fire activity. So looking at June, we are focusing on the southern areas, which is where we have seen those fires of 100 or 200 acres or more start to pop up. And that will continue going into July, again, anticipating maybe a drier than normal monsoon, at least at the onset, or a delayed onset. So we could see though that increased fire potential linger further into the fire season than we're normally used to in the south. And then really July and August, our main focus is those areas that we are expecting that increased fine fuel load, increased fuel continuity over parts of western and northern Nevada, northern Utah, and southern Idaho. So again, that really should be our hot spot going into this fire season. And again, mainly in the lower elevations, and we are really expecting a bigger fire season than what we've been seeing. Looking into September, we still continued the above normal fire potential. Uh, we also added central Idaho for August and September. Again, those higher elevations of central Idaho still need some time to dry out and for that snow to melt. But once we get later in the fire season, we are expecting another active year up in central Idaho. And this all could continue into September, especially if we have a drier than normal monsoon season. And we still see that drier and warmer, those drier and warmer conditions continuing into the fall. So again, we are expecting a busier fire season and a potentially longer fire season this year. That concludes our seasonal outlook for this month. Check back next month for the latest updates.